Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now this is the penultimate topic we will be looking at in this tutorial in this series. And this is a very small topic called as elemental procedures. Now uh, before I go to elemental procedure, I just want to mention a small topic. Okay, small concept. See, um, if you remember the mod function or absolute function or uh, absolute function, uh, some or some functions, some uh, some functions uh, which are available in Fortran. Okay, if I were to recall them properly, let me just uh, yeah, let me just find them. Yeah, like the minimum value, minimum fun functions or maximum function or sine function or the absolute function and all. Okay, if you if you guys take these functions, okay. Uh, regardless of whatever data type you give to them they are they do, they do the same process for instance if you do if you just give them a con uh, let's take an example of absolute fun absolute value okay uh, if you give a, a integer value into it it returns the po it returns the positive modulus modulus fine if it if you enter a complex number into it it returns the magnitude of it if you return the if you send a real number into it it again sends the absolute of it but in the real sense Okay, so if you guys notice, these functions are kind of functions which are in uh, which work which work in a similar in a manner, which sometimes which sometimes different for different data types. Okay, but for similar some data types, it's exactly the same. So these are like kind of uh, uh, does not uh, have very less dependence on the initial data type or the variables that are being sent into it. Okay. If you guys notice, these are actually called as elemental sub elemental procedures or elemental pro elemental procedures. Okay, that's the main thing. Meaning, what is an element procedure is that these are ele procedures which have very less importance and significance on the size of the variable, as well as the size of the variable, as well as the type of the variable. At least the type of the variable has less significant, has little more significance, whereas that size of it does not have any significance. And that's the reason why, even if you sent uh, Suppose if we want to find the mag uh, absolute of an entire array, a two-dimensional array, a three-dimensional array, everything, okay, you just send the entire two-dimensional array into a, a absolute function. It returns the small, it returns the positive values of the positive values for uh, each and every into uh, every entry of the array. Does not it does not bother about the size. It just works out works fine works it fine and sends the value. Now, how is it possible? Like because it was able, to, it works for even the smallest of values and even for the largest of arrays. How is it possible? It's possible because of elemental process. What do, what does these do? Are that they don't care about the size. They just take the value, look at the data type, and uh, does the job accordingly. That's what they do. Okay, and that is what we're going to do over here. Okay, I just have a module called as elements one, in which I've defined uh, three subroutines. Ex underscore r, ex underscore i, and ex underscore l, which are exact quint as which are essentially the same th same thing. They what did they do is just exchange numbers. I mean they swap numbers. Simple as that. I take two entries x and y as intent in out, meaning the values are get in, they will be modified. Okay, I use a temporary variable, and then using the temporary variable, I just swap. I just send the value of x to y and y to x. Okay, so when they when the x and y come with certain values. They get swapped and they go out with the others value when they come out of the subroutine. This works for real function. This subroutine works for real functions. Re I mean real values. This subroutine, which is exactly the same as above, but it works for integer for integer values. Whereas this function, this subroutine works for logical values. That's it. Okay. So what I have is that I have three elemental subroutines: one for real, one for integer, and one for logical. Okay. Now what I've done is that I have three three subroutines. I mentioned them in the module elements one. Now what I do is that if I were to make sure that uh, if I were to uh, use a common name and I don't I don't have I don't a uh, common name, uh, but you uh, which which is kind of independent of the data type or very less independent of the data type. What can be done? Interfacing is possible, isn't it? That's what we're going to use. If you use the interfacing for, for possibility over here, okay, for which what we saw in the last time, it, it says that we need another module in which an interfacing has to be done. So what I'm doing is that I'm creating another module called as elements two, in which 
I used all the subroutines of elements 1 and then I, de I define an interface block over here okay the interface blocks name is exchange and inside that I have three module I have written the three module procedures ex underscore r ex underscore i and ex underscore l and because of this if I just call exchange if I just call exchange it does uh, based on the data type I sent into it either one of these fun pro one of these possible procedures will be called accordingly and that's it okay uh, that's that's it now what I'm going to do is that I make a created the modules and created the interface now I'm importing both of them using this line use elements to in the program and what I have in the program is it may look big but it's actually simple I like I'll just walk you guys through I, I use the module uh, elements 2 here and then I define two real numbers AR equals 5 and BR equals 6 and then a uh, one dimensional matrix a real mat two one dimensional matrices of real type ER1 equals 5 and BR1 equals 6 okay similarly in the same manner I create two integers AI and BI equals 5 and 6 and integer matrices an integer array of 10 size dimension 10 one dimensional uh, matrix of array of size 10 whose value AI1 is 5 and BI1 is 6. Similarly, I create a, a counterpart for logical. I set a, AL to be true and BL to be false. And similarly, I set a logical one-dimensional array with AL1 equals true and BL1 equals false. Fine. And now what I do is that I'm just print, I, I'm just taking uh, the real numbers part separately, integer part separately and the logical part separately. I'm printing the values. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is before swapping, I let I'm just going to print the value of AR, BR, AR1, BR1. And then what I what I do is that I call the is I call the exchange subroutine. I just call this exchange subroutine with AR and BR. Okay. With uh, passing variables AR and BR. And then I call the exchange subroutine again with this time AR1 and BR1. So what I'm doing is that I'm just passing two variables of the same data type and same size into it. Here I'm passing two uh, variables, uh, same data type and same size. Each of them are each of them are one-dimensional arrays of 10, uh, 10 units. Okay, passing them here, and then what I do, I'm just getting after after these, I'm just printing the same printing the same above after the swapping, but supposedly swapping. Okay, I print AR, BR1, AR1, and BR1 and all. Okay, and similarly, after this entire job is done. What I'm doing is that I'm, uh, I'm continuing the same process for all the integers. Uh, I'm just printing the value of integers, exchanging them here and here, and then printing the values of integers again. Okay. Similarly, I'm printing the values of logical values here. I'm using the exchange values over here. I'm just using the exchange function subroutine to exchange them, and then I print them over here. Simple as that. Simple enough. Okay. Now let's see how this works. Logically speaking, regardless of whatever dimension you give, this element should work. Okay. Now if I were to compile this, build this, and execute this, okay, I'm getting a lot of answers here. Let's walk through one by one. Okay. Before swapping, this is the first part. Okay. Er is five. Yes. Br is six. Yes. Er one is five and it should be a 10 values okay that doesn't matter there are 10 values over here you can count it if you want and br1 is 6 6 and it's 10 values again you can count it if you want and this is okay now after swapping ar is 6 instead of 5 and br is 5 instead of 6 which it's indicating that they these two have, have been successfully swapped and similarly ar1 is 6 10 times instead of 5 10 times and br1 is 5 10 times instead of 6 10 times indicating that this also has been swapped Similarly, similarly, the integer part of it, which comes over here, uh, okay, which comes over here, yeah, uh, which it also has been swapped accordingly. Here, if you guys look at this, A B A and B I are five and six. They have been swapped also over here, and similarly, the A one and B I one also have been swapped successfully. And similarly, if you look at the logical part of it, A L is true and B L is false. And AL1 is true and AL1 is false 10 times. BL1 is uh, false 10 times. And they have been swapped successfully as well. Now, not only this. Not only this. Even if you give something. Even if you. Uh, 
give a three dimensional matrix or a 10 dimensional matrix it doesn't matter as long as the entries are the same dimension they work to just to check whether the dimensions do cross match okay what i'm doing is that i'm intentionally creating a mistake over here er and br1 do not have the same size if i were to compile this it throws an error stating that uh, lm is uh, stating that uh, uh, on the elemental okay actual argument at one for intent in out dummy x of elemental subroutine ex is a scalar but the other actual actual argument is an array meaning what it says is that one of them is an array one of them is a scalar so the, what happens is that both of them are having is do not have the same sizes that is what it's complaining over here okay now on the other hand if i were to remove this one and if i were to compile this it works fine and builds fine run this execute this they just work fine okay that's work fine now if you guys want to make an elemental subroutine wherein uh, some functions which do not care about ex ex exactly about what kind of a data type you have to work on I mean the size of the data type and all this is the best bet to work with okay uh, this this is a very interesting concept and this might be a this could be a really useful concept provided twist your may uh, twist your thoughts and stuff nicely uh, twist your thoughts such a manner uh, for for some application and it will work out work out very nice I just want I just go I just want you guys to you know uh, take this program or make a uh, copy this and you know uh, make your own uh, play with your play with the stuff play with your own stuff and try to see how this works and all and this might be very useful for you know for at least for you know large scale programmers and who are in, a, who are in some pro models and projects and all okay that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial which will be I think it's the final tutorial of this tutorial, tutorial series and then after that you will have uh, one more uh, one more uh, 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 summary summary tutorial where summary summary video lecture where, where we'll, be, we'll be discussing on what can be done beyond what can be done in Fortran from here onwards. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next tutorial. So see ya.